50 years ago, David Tran stashed 100 ounces of gold in condensed milk cans to escape the authorities. Since the chase, David turned that gold into a nine-figure business with no sales team, no trademark, and zero dollars in ad spend. It's a product you use, a business you've heard of, but a story you haven't. The outrageous origin of David Tran and Sriracha is one that highlights the importance of a visual identity for your brand, the impact of word of mouth, and the role psychology plays in both. Here's the story. Living with his wife, son, and daughter in South Vietnam, there was tons of communist pressure which put the family in a dire situation. To defend his family and homeland, David served in the South Vietnamese army, but they were defeated in 1975 and communist forces overtook the city. Left scrambling with his wife and two kids, David rushed to send his family on a charter to Hong Kong. While his wife and kids were able to flee, David had to wait and hope to catch another freighter. Poor, separated from his family, communist forces on his heels, the outlook was bleak. But a ship by the name Hoi Fong had room for David. Successfully landing in Hong Kong weeks later, David was reunited with family and a new passion to pursue. After serving in the army, he picked up an interest in farming. Using his brother's land, David grew chili peppers and even made his own sauce with them. However, the family's time was short in Hong Kong and they were forced to flee to the United States where they arrived in Boston. With nothing but 100 ounces of gold stored in condensed milk cans, David Tran and his family felt incredibly out of place in Boston. Cold climate, minimal Vietnamese influence, and thousands of miles away from their homeland. Tran looked into making his own hot sauce to sell on the streets in Boston to support his family. But the climate wasn't fit for peppers, and you need peppers to make hot sauce. The problem was clear, no community, no money, and no opportunity. But the solution wasn't so clear. Tran had heard rumblings of a large Vietnamese presence in California, but his family was already on thin ice from moving halfway across the world to the United States. Another move seemed like an impossible task. But David's brother-in-law, who fled to California, would call frequently, telling stories about the heavy influence of Vietnamese culture, the number of vendors and markets who sold peppers, and a local pepper farm that was hiring. It was all or nothing. The job on the pepper farm was David's last shot. So he picked the family up and moved them across the United States and into Los Angeles. This was a last ditch chance for the family to escape poverty. Working long hours at his new job on the pepper farm just outside of LA, but still not being able to make ends meet, David was forced to pick up a side hustle. Taking the recipe he used to make hot sauce years back, David began making his own hot sauce again. The only problem was there was no chili peppers grown in California, so he had to use jalapenos. Working with what he had, David would bottle the hot sauce in recycled baby jars and slap a rooster on the side to differentiate his hot sauce. David was born in 1945, the year of the rooster. David named his product Sriracha after a small village in Thailand, but because he named it after a physical place, he was unable to trademark the name. So instead, he trademarked the rooster and green cap he used on his bottles. Selling the hot sauce on the weekends out of his old school blue Chevy van, David would go door to door of Vietnamese restaurants and grocery stores selling the sauce. He knew his target audience and met them directly where they were with one product and one offer. The business steadily grew and was formally incorporated under the name Hoi Fong Foods, named after that iconic ship that saved David's life. Hoi Fong Foods Sriracha success inspired many copycats, with Heinz and Tabasco producing their very own Sriracha sauce. When asked about the competition using Sriracha in their name, David Tran said he doesn't care, he calls them free advertising. It's an absolutely baller mindset. That's one of the major benefits David saw from being the first mover in the industry. He was the trailblazer, he made the first impression, and his brand had become the point of reference for the industry. It's on the same level of brand loyalty that giants like Apple and Coke experience. But just as the business seemed primed for extreme growth, Hoi Fong faced two massive hurdles and David Tran's family's future was in the balance. A competitor in Thailand bought the original Sriracha recipe that David used and named themselves Sriracha Paniche. Similar name, similar recipe, this was a massive threat. On top of that, there was a lawsuit coming from Hoi Fong's exclusive jalapeno provider, which is way more dire than it sounds. The jalapeno ripening window is incredibly short, and Hoi Fong makes an entire year's supply of their sriracha in only 10 weeks. So their exclusive jalapeno provider withholding services and suing Hoi Fong risks the entire business. Despite both problems, sales continued to skyrocket, hitting 150 million in revenue in 2022. David was able to come to an agreement with his jalapeno provider and moving forward, signed three jalapeno providers to diversify his risk. David's brand was strong enough to withstand a near identical product on the market in Sriracha Paniche. There were minimal differences between David's product and the competitions, which shows the power that a brand has. Just like the age old Coke vs Pepsi blind taste test, I know for a fact you have your preference between the two, but if you had to blind taste test them, you'd be unable to tell the difference between them. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. They're the same picture.
The only thing that makes you buy one product over the other is the brand. The rooster on the side of the bottle, the green cap symbolizing freshness, and the focus on quality ingredients is what separates Hoi Fong Foods in the minds of the consumer, aka it's the brand. Over the last 10 years, David Tran has been approached multiple times for deals well into the 10 figure range, and to each, he declined. His American dream was never to become a billionaire. He started this because he likes fresh, spicy chili sauce. David's kids now play a massive role in the business with his daughter as the vice president, but it's his anti-marketing marketing strategies that need to be studied. David Tran has been quoted saying how he could use less expensive ingredients or promote sriracha to make more money, but his goal is always to try to make a rich man's hot sauce at a poor man's price. He's focused on continuing to make a good quality product, like making the hot sauce spicier and not thinking about making more profits. He caps retailers selling prices at $10. It's this level of honesty that consumers appreciate. He's in it for the love of the product, not the profits, which is rare. And the compound growth of Sriracha can be attributed to word of mouth. David Tran went door to door of Vietnamese restaurants and gave them a product he knew they couldn't refuse. With one product, one offer, and one target audience, Sriracha's small beginnings were not small for long. Word of mouth is one of the hardest forms of marketing to initiate, but once you can, it is the most effective. To prove that, a Nielsen study discovered 92% of consumers trust recommendations from friends and families over all forms of advertising. Without word of mouth, Sriracha would still just be a tiny village in Thailand, not a nine-figure brand. Now, there's one last piece of the puzzle that I went down a rabbit hole about trying to answer this question. What is the psychology behind why some humans love spicy foods? Outside of the taste, spicy foods can test your limits. Like I see it as the dining equivalent of bungee jumping. Humans enjoy the bragging rights that come with conquering a particularly spicy dish. And the typically exotic meal can enhance one's image as a worldly and open-minded individual. This parlays perfectly into Sriracha's empire that relied heavily on word of mouth to introduce the product to new hands.